guys, it's Emily, and I know it's been a hot minute since I filmed a video, but today I'm here to bring you my Nonfiction November 2017 TBR. Nonfiction November is a month-long reading challenge hosted by Olive from A Book Olive and Gemma from Nonfic Books, and I'll link their announcement videos down below. And the goal is just to read more nonfiction in the month of November, and I'm a big lover of nonfiction, as y'all know, and so I'm always excited about this challenge. It's my second year to make an, an, an official TBR for it, and there's like last year, there's four prompts that you can do, and I've chosen four books to sort of kind of fit the prompts. And then I have um, three other books that just aren't going to fit any prompts that I'm just reading. But they're all nonfiction books, and let's just get right into it. The first prompt I want to mention is Home, and for that I'm going to read Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worldly. This is a book that Gemma recommended in her announcement video as a prompt, as a choice for the home prompt, and she's also mentioned it before on her channel, and I've also read about it, I think in like Entertainment Weekly or something like that, so it was a book that I was aware of, and I decided I was going to pick it up, so it's the newest addition to my TBR, it's also going to work for my A to Z challenge to read a book with the letter J, that starts the title, I was going to read Just Mercy by Brian Stevens for this prompt, but I learned that that book references To Kill a Mockingbird a lot, and I haven't read To Kill a Mockingbird in over 10 years, so I think I'm going to reread To Kill a Mockingbird in January, and then um, read Just Mercy. So for this year, for the J prompt, I'm going to read this one, and it, like I said, it means the prompt for the home. Um, as far as I know, this is a nonfiction book where Lucy Worldly is going around to the places that influenced Jane Austen, like Bath and some of the other towns where she lived with her family, and talking about how those book, how those places affected her books and where they show up in her books. So I'm really excited to get this this one, and I'm glad that I learned about it from Gemma. The next prompt is love, and for this one, I'm choosing this very non-attractive book, and it's called Processing the Past, Contesting Authority in History and the Archives. And this is a book um, that I read about in my, one of my classes. I've mentioned before that when I'm getting my Master of Library Science with a folk with an emphasis on archival studies, and I'm going to graduate in December, which I'm super excited about. And so archives and history are things that I love very much and that I'd like to spend the rest of my life working on and with. So I'm looking forward to reading this book. Um, I, like I said, I read about it in one of my readings for school, and it just sounds really interesting. It's about the concept of authority and who judges archives, like the things that are brought into archives as being authoritative and how do they get this authority and things like that. So this is for my love prop. And I forgot to mention, a part of the reason I'm reading this is because it's one of the books on my TBR that is only available at my university library, not at my local public library. And once I graduate, in December, I'm going to lose access, student access to the library, so I'd have to pay for the interlibrary loan to get the books that are from the university library. So I'm trying to make a good effort in reading those TBR books, including um, this book, before I can before I graduate and lose my student access. The next prompt for nonfiction November is substance, and for this book, I'm for this prompt, I'm reading the Glass Universe: How the Ladies of the Harvard University no, Harvard Observatory took the measure of the stars, and from what I've read about this, it's sort of like Hidden Figures for Astronomy, and it's by Deva Sobel, and I've read um, Galileo's Daughter by Deva Sobel and really liked it, and I put this on my TBR earlier in the year after my library got it in, and it was on a display by the circulation desk for a long time, and I'm sort of, I'm not sure if it really counts for substance, but I figured since we're technically all made of stardust and stuff, and they're going to study the stars, it sort of kind of counts. I don't know if it really counts, but this is a book that I've had on my TBR for a while, and it's also going to count for my Dewey challenge. Um, I'm reading a or I'm doing a challenge where I read a book of every um, Dewey Decibel 
um, category this year, and this is going to meet the 500 category prompt, so that's why I'm putting this on my TBR. And I'm looking forward to this, and I'm assuming it's going to be full of badass women doing cool astronomy stuff. And I don't know, like, that much about astronomy. I took Astronomy 101 in college, but I'm interested to learn a little bit more about um, astronomy and badass women. The last prompt for Nonfiction November this year is scholarship, and for this I'm reading Killers of the Flower Moon, The Osage Murders, and the Birth of the FBI by David Grant. And the reason I'm choosing this for scholarship is because this has been heavily referenced in the um, literature of my field lately, the archive field. Um, it was recently referenced in Prologue Magazine, which is the magazine for the National Archives. And then it was also referenced in a recent article in The New Yorker about the power of libraries and archives. So it's basically the industry dark right now and it's um you know in the prologue magazine they talked about how David Grant found the idea for this book in the National Archives when he was doing other research and so it's really cool scholarship and it's really cool that it's using the National Archives and I'm really excited to read this and I don't know if you can see but it says advanced readers copy so I actually got this from the art table at my work so I'm super excited and I got this cool book for free and yeah, and it also is going to meet my challenge for my ATC challenge to read a book with the letter K at the start. So I am working on multiple challenges and I'm glad to be getting um, multiple things done with this book as well. And if you, this has been going around booktube, so if you haven't heard about it, it's basically about how oil was found in the Osage um, territory. And so the Osage became very rich and then one, one by one certain um, family members of one family began being killed off and so it's about why they were killed off and then the FBI was formed to sort of um, figure out who was doing this and so it's supposed to be a really fascinating thing so I'm really excited about this one. Then for my non, like the ones that aren't going to be the prop but I've just, that I'm just reading for the month. Um, the first one of those is Introverts in the Church, Finding Our Place in an Extroverted Culture by Adam S. McHugh and Y'all know I'm an introvert, and y'all know that I'm also a Christian, and I'm really involved in my local church, but I have had problems in the past where I feel like I'm not included as much because I am an introvert, and I don't really like, you know, being the leaders that talk a lot or do things like that. So I actually bought this book a long time ago, back in 2014, and I was sort of putting it off because I thought I needed to read, read Quiet by Susan Cain first, but I finished that earlier in the year, in the summer, and I found out that this book was actually earlier, like written before Quiet, and it's actually referenced in Quiet as one of her um, catalysts for writing that book. So in hindsight, I should have read this one first, but I didn't know that. But I'm going to read it now, and it counts for my A to Z challenge to read a book with the letter I at the start. So once again, I'm meeting this, and I'm really excited to learn more about how introverts can be included in the church and how we can be showing our leadership skills in the non-traditional ways. So looking forward to this book as well. The next book I'm planning to read is the only one that I don't have a physical copy of yet. I forgot to check it out at the library, but it's called Between You and Me, Confessions of a Comma Queen by Mary Norris, I believe. Um, I'll link it. It'll be right here when you're watching this. But um, this is another one that I'm reading for my Jewish Challenge. To It's going to count for the 400 category in the Jewish Challenge, and I don't know much about it, except that it's a memoir about somebody who's really particular about grammar, and I'm pretty particular about grammar, although I have been trying to be less um, strict about it lately, because I have read um, articles and stuff talking about how it's sort of like a class thing to be overly concerned about um, grammar and things like that and how it's sort of used to show that people are intelligent even though that's not necessarily a way to judge intelligence but I am still very interested in reading this book and once again it's going to shout for both Nonfiction November and my um, Jewish challenge so I'm excited about that. And lastly, um, I'm not strictly reading this for Netflix in November, but I am planning to finish it in November. Uh, but this is my textbook for one of my classes this uh, semester. My last two classes, I keep saying it, but I'm so excited about graduating. Anyway, um, 
This book is called Systems Analysis for Librarians and Information Professionals, second edition, and uh, y'all, I shouldn't be reviewing this, this isn't the place, but I don't really understand how this can be a textbook for a class in 2017 when it was published in like 2002. Okay, I'm not going to say anything more about that, but I am going to finish this in November, so I guess it technically is counting for my TBR for not in November. So yeah, but that's all I'm probably planning to read for November. I'm super excited about the, um, Nonfiction November Challenge, and thanks to all of NGMA for hosting it, because I'm really excited about it, and uh, I'll come back and bring you a wrap-up at the end of the month, and let you know how I did. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to read all of these books. Um, my reading has slacked off considerably lately, because I've been working and doing school and trying to find a job, um, because of, you know, the aforementioned graduation coming up, I need a full-time job, Pref preferably with some benefits if possible, because you know Trump's about to get rid of Obamacare. And um, anyway, that's a different story for another video. But I'll be back with a wrap-up soon. I hope I get all these books done. If I don't, I'll just move them to December. No big deal. Y'all know I love to read nonfiction year-round. I hope everybody's having a great November so far, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!